Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 41 of the Breakthrough Active Podcast. As always, I'm here with Mitch. How are you? Good afternoon, mate. I'm uh, doing well. It's just after Easter, so we wanted to get a podcast in, and we put a few different ideas out to our members, and the one that we landed on was actually about nutrition, which is very appropriate, considering a lot of us probably overdid things a little bit over Easter, including myself. I had so many cream eggs it wasn't funny and I'm glad they're gone because they used to get me next to the register every single time. Just can't have them in the house, mate. That's, that's, cool. that's the problem. All right. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'm going to lead the way here. So we, we ended up deciding on five different myths or beliefs that we do hear of and we have heard of over the years and we're just going to unpack and discuss those a little bit. Some of these you guys might have heard before. It might be the first time that, that you have heard some of them as well but it's some that we have heard many times over the years. So we just wanted to elaborate on each of them and put our two cents in like we always do. So first one, which is probably arguably the, the most common one is that carbs are the devil or that carbs are no good for you. So what, uh, what are your thoughts on carbohydrates, Jamie, as it relates to people thinking they're bad? That one sentence bothers me so much because carbs are definitely not the devil. And 50 years ago, fat was the devil, and now carbs are the devil. And well, now, 50 years ago, it's, it was probably only 10 years ago. And then, and now eating breakfast is the devil, and then eating after 6 p.m. is the devil. And then you only can eat certain colors of food. It's just all these myths, all these, I guess, things that are popular on Instagram and Facebook, none of them are actually true. And, and so when it... When it comes to carbs, maybe let's just elaborate quickly on what carbs are. For, so for carb, people. Car, carbohydrates are your fruits, uh, your breads, your pasta, your rice, your cereal, uh, carbs. And sugars. One, I mean, and sugars, cool. yeah. One gram of carbohydrate is four calories, regardless whether it's a fruit, bread, refined sugar, whatever, whatever you choose. Whenever, that, whenever, whenever I'm talking to people about improving their nutrition, without doubt they'll normally say yeah I, I just need to cut out the bread and cut out the pastas because they feel as though that that's really their major problem when it comes to nutrition so i believe it's more of an issue of quantity as opposed to quality of what they're eating so what what do you think the biggest misconception is with people thinking that those foods are bad it's exactly it it's just the portion sizes of those meals, like carbohydrates, not only are they not the devil, in my opinion, they are 100% beneficial to being healthy. And that is due to performance, that is due to like regulating your body composition. And the majority of foods that taste great and you enjoy are carbohydrates. And if you think carbs are the devil and you're never gonna eat them, you're gonna have a very miserable existence, existence on earth if you're only eating protein and fat. I think, I think out of that protein and fats, I mean, this might be obvious to you, but not to everyone, they're, they're the easiest ones to overeat as well. So you, you can sit down and have a massive bowl of cereal and a big serving of pasta or, you know, a lot of bread or pizza, which are all very carb heavy. And they're the easiest to overhead because it takes a while for your body to register that you've actually eaten them. Whereas fats and proteins don't have the same thing. So I, I don't believe that, and neither do you, I don't believe that they're bad for you. I just think for most people, they just completely overdo it. And even a lot of the chocolate that people have eaten over Easter, very, very high in sugar, which you know, obviously is carbohydrates and it's easy just to pack away a lot of it. So I think people need to start thinking more along the lines of that they are important and we, we do need them, but just be mindful of the quantity in which you eat them. Well, if you were to have 1,000 calories of rice, which is a lot of rice or 1000 calories of avocado, the, the darling food of the 21st century, the healthiest food on earth. If you had a thousand calories of rice, thousand calories of avocado. If you ate that consistently over a long period of time, your body composition, how much weight gain or weight loss would be identical. It would not change at all. The question you need to ask yourself is, would you prefer to eat rice and bread and pasta, or would you prefer to eat avocado, bacon, almonds, macadamias, or a mix of both? And then the question becomes, what would keep you fuller? What foods do you enjoy more? What type of eating 
is going to be more consistent for you long term. Yeah, at the end of the day, it does come down just the calorie intake. And, and like you mentioned, 1,000 calories is 1,000 calories, whether it comes from carbs, fats, or, or whatever it may be. But I, I really just believe that they are just so easy to overeat. And, and that's probably the, the, you know, where people have their downfall. And a lot of the time when people overeat breads and pasta and things, it makes them feel like shit. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's where they feel like that, that full sort of lethargic and bloated feeling is, is leading to weight gain, where it's just that feeling because you've, you've, you've eaten so much of it in such a short amount of time. But it, it doesn't, doesn't make you gain weight because you eat bread as opposed to if you're eating something else. So it, it's, it, they're not bad by any means. I just think people overdo it. Yeah, and, and causation does not equal correlation. What that means is just because people, people remove carbs from their diet and they think carbs are the devil and they lose weight, but they're just removing like food out of their diet. They're removing calories out of their diet. Just because you remove the carbohydrates, that does not mean why you lost the weight. If you lost the weight because you reduced your calories. If you did that through protein and fat, it would be very, very, very similar. And like, there is a huge difference between a banana and a cream, a cream egg. And both people, the majority of people on the outside world will consider them both carbohydrates. So is the cream egg the devil or is the banana the devil? Or are you eating too many bananas, too many cream eggs combining with pasta, bread and rice? Yeah, we'll leave that one there. But in short, carbs aren't, aren't the devil, not by any means. Just like any other food, including fat, including even some, some forms of protein, you just need to make sure you don't overdo it. Uh, the second one we have is the complete opposite to this, well, somewhat opposite, is that eating fat will make you fat. Now, we, we spoke about this quickly at the start where this was kind of like a bit of an older school of thought, you know, probably not 50 years ago, but more like maybe a decade ago. And, and even now, like I have conversations with, with my parents and they'll still think that low fat food is good for you because it doesn't have fat. So I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that it's actually called fat and then we have fat on our bodies and we feel as though that's something very bad. So what do you think, uh, I guess, what do you think is the reason why people would think eating fat is no good for you? And how can we help them understand that it is important for them? Because Alan Zolli's promote 99% fat-free snakes alive. And yeah. certain yogurts are 99% fat-free. And light milk has less fat than regular milk. But quite often when they remove fat, they have to add something else and they end up adding sugar. So now... Not, not, <laughs> quite, not quite often. All, all, all the time. All the time. Yeah, all the time. All the time. So the idea of not eating fat is silly. Um, 0 0.07 grams per kilo of body weight. So if I'm 100 kilos, I need to have 70 grams of fat. That is absolutely essential for like, kind of like getting too complicated, but the production of regular hormones, right? Yeah. So people that go on fat-free diets for a long period of time can get really, really, really sick because it regulates a lot of the, the, the hormones in our body, uh, testosterone, estrogen, and cortisol. I think, I think, you know, a lot of people do know, or at least the people that we're, you know, networked with, know that there are healthy fats and unhealthy fats. And, you know, typical avocados are good fat and, and nuts are a good fat. And, you know, the yolk and eggs are a good fat. But I think a lot of it comes back to, I guess, people's education where, you know, and again, my, my dad tells you this, he'll say, oh, yeah, like that, that food's really fattening. Like, <laughs> I don't even really know what that means. Like it's, it's going to make you fat. It's got a lot of fat in it. And I think like you mentioned, a lot of these foods that have higher fat have next to no sugar. And then the opposite, the ones that have next to no fat have really high sugar. At the end of the day, it all comes down to the, the calories consumed, which are attached to that. But I don't think the marketing does any favors where, you know, there are certain companies like Allen's and, and other confectionery companies that market, you know, 99% fat free on their lollies. And there, there are still people who think that these are okay for me because there's no fat in them. And why that first started was, uh, so it's four calories per one gram of carbohydrates, four calories per one gram of protein, and fat is nine calories per one gram. So that is why fat got a bad rep in the first place, because per singular gram, fat does contain more calories. But then they realized that obesity is getting worse and worse and worse, everyone's eating fat free, it can't be fat. So what is it? They've replaced the fat with the sugar 
it now must be the sugar when it always comes back to always comes back to calories in versus calories out and i'll i'll speak to people and so i'm dead in the face about calories in calories out and after a 25 minute chat they'll ask me oh but is 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 that carbohydrate bad like it's just it's because the the the, the, the principle is so simple calories in versus calories out but just because it's simple doesn't mean it's simple to follow because it requires understanding portion control and tracking your food somewhat it's just it's so simple that people want to complicate it because they can't believe it's that simple and it actually works i think it's hard for some people to wrap their heads around as well even when you know you have had a big chat with them is because they've been conditioned for the last 20 or 30 years of their life to to be told that, that fat's bad for you and they don't know anything about calories so it's, it's really just about re-educating and retraining people's thought process but you know, and now obviously with the, the rise of diets like keto and Atkins, obviously they're promoting fat and then there's good and bad fat. So there is, there is a bit of complicated, you know, I guess things to, to get their head around. But to, to keep things simple, just, just like carbohydrates, that they're important. It's not bad for you. It's, not, it's good for you in, in quantity. You can't overdo it. You can't overdo anything. But by no means should you be avoiding fat. And by no means should be avoiding carbohydrates. You want a healthy balance of both. All right, myth number three. What was it, mate? Yeah, number three. We've got protein shakes will make you bulky. So this is one that we've answered a lot of times, and uh, it, it's more. We won't talk so much about protein as in the the, the need for protein because I think we spoke about that a lot. But we have a lot of a lot of our clients, normally women who don't want to take a protein shake because it will make them bulky. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, because protein shakes originally came out with like weight gaining shakes and, and they're often confused. I remember I was like 18, I went home with my first type of protein powder and mum looked at me like I had just purchased steroids underground. Like it is so misunderstood. It is literally the, the powder in those protein containers is food. It's like processed whey processed a lot but it's actually a food source and it's just a great way to increase your protein intake which we won't go into but everyone knows protein is important it tastes great it's convenient and you can add lots of different things in there like fruits berries vegetables and it will definitely not make you bulky the same way 1000 calories of rice 1000 calories of uh avocado 1000 calories of protein it's not going to make much much of a difference if done consistently over a long period of time. I think a lot of the people where we get these questions from are you know people in their you know late thirties and forties and fifties, and when protein powder first became popular, it was probably marketed by bodybuilders. Yeah, you know, yeah. these big muscly men and these you know even muscly women, and not everyone wants to look like that, and that's absolutely fair enough. And that's I guess back in the eighties and nineties, it was being portrayed that if you take something like that then you're going to look like them but at the end of the day you know a protein shake might have about 20 grams of protein in it 20 to 25 and that that is effectively the same as having 100 125 grams of chicken and yeah. at the end of the day there's not much different i mean obviously there, there there is if you get into the science of it with how your body absorbs it and everything else but protein is protein whether it comes from an animal whether it comes from eggs whether it comes from powder for, for what we're talking about in terms of it being bulk, making you bulky. If you're someone who feels like it would, then you should probably stop eating protein altogether because that, that's very much a flawed and uh, outdated thought about how to, how to look at things. Yeah, and like it, it's sold everywhere. It's sold in Coles, Audi, Woolworths, service stations. Like it's just such a popular product now because it's a great product to hit your daily protein intake goal and before you had to go to a supplement shop with the big muscular guy behind the counter yeah, it's becoming a lot more mainstream you can uh, buy i'd almost recommend that everyone listening 99.9 percent of people should have protein powder in their house and should use it if they struggle to reach their protein goal or struggle to get their vegetable intake down because it's very very helpful for that well then you just don't have time sometimes so it's yeah like and as you said before, chicken and protein powder is the same. If you're looking for some food after your workout, what's easier to fry up a piece of chicken in your car or yeah. add some water to a shake? And that's why it's great because it's really convenient. Next one. And you could probably speak more about this because you have a new love for this over the last uh, year or two is coffee is bad for you. Yeah, I didn't like coffee for a long period of time. 
and um, I was going through a bit of a dieting phase where I was trying to lose some body fat. And I started having it in the morning instead of my usual meal. And the reason I did that was because caffeine is a really great appetite suppressor, right? So after a coffee, you can quite often feel full, which is great. The problem isn't the coffee. The problem is the muffin next to the 7-Eleven coffee machine that's 700 calories. The problem is if you have coffee morning, lunch, and at 3 p.m. and you don't sleep well. So like everything, I, I truly... And, and, sorry, I just cut you off. I think as well what, what you mix with coffee. Because you can, have, you, you can have a long black or you can have it with, with a dash of milk and you know, one or two sugars or the equal stuff that you have. Or you can get a full-blown latte in the cafe, which is an extra couple hundred calories on top of what you're, what you're going to be having normally. So it, it comes back to calories in that sense. And I think, like you mentioned as well, if you're having it and it is affecting your sleep, then that's when it's bad for you. It, it's, it's not actually the, the ingredients or the nutrients of coffee because that's actually been proven to be good for you. It's if, it's if it is affecting your sleep and you're struggling to sleep or you're getting bad quality sleep, then that's when it's becoming unhealthy. If you're coupling coffee with a muffin or, or something else or, or a cigarette or something because that, that's the habit that you formed, or if you're having a lot of milk and a lot of sugar and, and you know, caramel and chocolate and the rest of it, in with the coffee as well, that's when it really becomes unhealthy. But coffee as a standalone, not unhealthy. I think there's, you know, I don't know if a lot of people do understand that, but it, science has proven that over and over again, the caffeine and then coffee and coffee beans are actually a good point. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's the extras that you add into that coffee, the caramel latte with chocolate on top and the cookie, but just cafe, like as in like one teaspoon of coffee with some water and a dash of milk, which is what I have. So that, 10 to 11 calories. Uh, I use stevia. It's really, really good. 10 or 11. Uh, sorry. Specific. 10 or 11 calories. Very yeah. specific. It is. I, I, yeah, just a dash. Could be either way. I don't even, I don't even count because it's that low. I had some stevia, which is a really low calorie natural sweetener. And it is my favorite thing of the day. All right. And last one, which uh, is something we talk about probably a little more over the last couple of years, and it's to do with fasting as in when you're using fasting as a diet tool. And the myth is that fasting is great for everyone. So there, there are some people that swear by fasting and, and they're the, you know, huge advocates for it and will tell everyone who will listen that they should be doing it. What is your experience with fasting? Because I know you've, you've had a bit of a change the last, um, last couple of months. What's your experience with it and how would you recommend it or would you recommend it to other people? Well, before we discuss fasting, the most important thing is that every single diet that you do is a different way to reduce your calorie intake, right? So I believe- At least manage your calorie intake. Or, yeah, ma managing your calories or uh, allow you to regularly hit your food intake on a, on a daily basis. As far as like intermittent fasting goes, so potentially skipping breakfast or pushing your first meal back to later in the day, I think it is one of the best ways to do that. And for me personally, I'm not that hungry in the morning. So I'll have a coffee at about 4.30 a.m. on the way to the gym. And then I won't eat till 11.30, 12 o'clock when I get home. Then I can absolutely go bananas between 12 and 4 before I run more sessions. And I'm just, I'm, I much, much prefer my food, I guess, later in the day, which is why fasting is great for me. But if I had the most important meal of the day breakfast... I would already have had a large portion of my calories before that 11 or 12 o'clock mark. I think a lot of just preference as well. Like if you have someone where they really do enjoy their breakfast or, or there's someone who goes out for breakfast a lot or they have breakfast with their kids every morning and that's a big important part of their day. It's, it's part of their life. For people like you and like I do to an extent as well, people who, who have big appetites and you know, feel as though they may need to manage their intake a little bit, I think it's, it's great for that. But it's not necessarily great for everyone. I think you have to have a look at your lifestyle and then from there see, are you someone that, that could go every day and not eat till lunchtime? You know, and, and a lot of people don't have appetite in the morning and if you're one of those people, then you're, you're, probably, you're probably well suited to it. If you're someone who wakes up hungry and you, like I said, you, you're out a lot, you're social in the mornings, probably not. 
for some people, I think it's a really great way to, to manage their intake and for other people, maybe not, not the best. Yeah, and I think that's where coffee's helped me because I do do a little bit of fasting where like I can go out in the morning, have a coffee with someone as opposed to having a meal and then eat the rest of my food later on the day. Like if you go out for breakfast, which is great, and you have eggs on toast, avocado, bacon, whatever you get, that's a thousand calories first thing in the morning. Then for the rest of the day, if you are trying to manage your intake or lose body, or lose body fat, you probably need to have a smaller lunch and dinner. When I'd rather skip that breakfast, and have a big lunch and a big dinner. So well, the other, you go. The other thing is, well, pe people who train in the mornings, that it might not be the greatest idea for them, and everyone's different. But if you are somebody who feels like you need to have something to eat before you train, so if you're training at six o'clock or six forty-five, and you have a piece of fruit before you go in. It's nice to refuel your body after you train, so maybe you do have breakfast after that or you have a shake or whatever it is, then perhaps for you, it's not the best. If you're someone that trains in the afternoon, then it might be a little bit more, more suitable for you because you don't really need that nutrients in the morning to help fuel whatever you're doing. You can save that to the afternoon. Yeah, and none of these rules are, none of these rules are set in stone. Like if you wanna have a protein shake and a banana post-workout, so you work out very early in the morning, that's 200 calories. You then cannot eat. You, you don't have to eat again until later, later in the day, right? It's just always doing... But yeah, the, the, the myth is that it's great for everyone. So no, I don't think it's great for everyone, but it can be very useful for some people and we've found success in doing it ourselves. So that's the five. So just to recap quickly, first one, carbs are the devil. False. Go second, eat one, <laughs> second one, eating fat will make you fat. False. Overeating fat will make you fat. Protein shakes will make you bulky. False, unless you're having a stupid amount of them and it's coupled with some sort of anabolic steroid, it won't. Coffee is bad for you. False, just don't eat muffins and other shit with it. And fasting is great for everyone. False, it can be can be very useful for some people, but maybe not everyone. Yeah, and, and, and like we've discussed this time and time again, but it really comes down to just that energy balance calories in calories out and the more you learn about calories the more you learn about macros the more you learn about just that overall intake and how it dictates your i guess body weight then you can learn to manipulate it and to suit your lifestyle and i think that's what's happened with us we become more and more educated over the years and we have a, adopted a food plan that suits us that we can do long term Exactly. It's all about something you can do over a longer period, not just flashes in the pan for a yeah. couple of minutes. So so one last thing. We're starting a beginner boot camp program at Walls on April 19. And on these phone calls, the last thing that I say to these people is, whatever we start April 19 has to be sustainable. Yeah. Which is why we aim for three sessions a week, which is why we aim for just, just eat less bad food at the start, not starting this super duper world's best diet. Yeah, it doesn't need to be a complete overhaul. I think everyone could have some very basic things that they could change, which would you know, drastically improve their nutrition as a whole. All right, let's wrap it up there, mate. Anything else? No, that's it for me. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll uh, talk to you on the next one. All right, bye.